place in the, in the, in the series of the trip where we, we went out a, a day and spent a day riding through the mountains and, and been in camp a couple th- couple days, I guess. And so uh, the next day, you know, that we were in, we didn't take everything with us when we went in. We didn't have enough room to, to carry it all. So we was all going back out to, to get some of the stuff that we needed, more food, water, whatever we needed later on in, in the trip, you know, to, for the camp to, to have everything we needed. And so there's a, there's a place called Snowball Ditch that's, that's about – I don't know, 45 minutes or so in into the, into the from the trailhead, and oh, it's a beautiful running creek, good water, and, and the horses always watered right there whenever we rode in or out of it. Uh, they got a picture of it, I think, where where we would stop and ride. Well, well when we got there at that at Snowball Creek, you can see it over to the over that horse's neck, and it's just, I mean, it's just running. It's pretty and fresh water. Uh, it was just a pretty cool spot. One of the best things about it, you know, when we're going in and out of camp and we're setting up camp, and Joe had told us that we've been, I mean, I had been thinking about it for a while, and I had been excited about it, uh, was the fact that once you leave the trailhead, you have absolutely no cell phone service. He said, I've been going up there in the mountains for 15 years, and once you leave the trailhead, it's done. You ain't going to talk to nobody till we come out, and sometimes you got to go all the way back to town uh, to, to have cell phone service. So I was kind of anxious, you know, about like anxious to not have it. And then there was a little bit of me that was anxious because I wouldn't have it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, I mean, if we're just going to be honest with each other, we're, we're so attached to everything and everybody by our phone, there's a little bit of excitement that you can't talk to everybody, but a little bit of anxiousness of what happens and what if somebody needs to get hold of us? What if something's going on? And there's a, it's like, you know, I, 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 I thought about this before I put it down, but it's like being married as long as I've been married. I mean, the, the thought of not being able to have Christy makes me a little bit anxious. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I, man, ooh, I can't imagine. And the thought of having her, I mean, if we've been together since we were in school, 30 years, we, and, and the thought of one day I may, may not have her, it makes me a little anxious. But the thought of getting away from her can make me a little excited. I mean, Y'all might say amen. Yeah. I, I, know, I know y'all know. And so that's kind of where I was at. You know what I'm saying? I can remember. I mean, the night we spent in, in uh, Chama, I, I, and that next morning I said, hey, look here. Now, I ain't been able to talk to you for a while. She said, okay. You know, okay. I'm like, we weren't that, you know, we've been married forever in a day. So it was kind of like, you know, this is pretty exciting. No phone. On our second day out, when we come out to get more stuff out of that out of our trucks, right there at Snowball Ditch, somebody's phone ding, ding. Now listen, not all of us recognized it. I mean, I, 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 and, and, but but some did. Some heard that ding and went, "Whoa, hold on a minute." Now, Joe Mama, he's clueless because he's done told us I've been coming up for fifteen years and I've never called or talked to my wife. Once I enter the mountains, it's over. I don't talk to nobody. I don't talk to nobody. I don't go, you know, not till I leave the mountains. Do I? You just can't. I want you to understand. He's been doing this for fifteen years. So when he said you ain't had no cell phone service, guess what I said? Good enough for me. I ain't got no cell phone service. I knew I had me three or four sermons in my phone, so I wanted my battery to last. So I put my phone on airplane mode. That way my phone ain't wasting no battery power searching for a, a, a signal. And I can listen to my downloaded sermons for a week on my phone. Y'all with me? So I put myself, I willingly chose not to even hunt a way to be connected. I'm like, shoot, dog, we're going to airplane mode on this sucker. Joe never even thought he might could be connected. He done been 15 years, he ain't never been connected. Why would this year be any different? So when we heard, when the ding went off, it didn't register with us. We was we was we just wasn't paying. We didn't could have been because we didn't want to know what that was. Could have been we've ignored so many things in the past that this was just another thing. Y'all ever do that? But those that heard the ding might have just been desperate enough to stay in contact that that ding meant something. And it wasn't like God unnoticed or undesired or unwanted or unappreciated. It was, wait a minute. 
we can actually have contact with the outside world. Now, listen, that, that mountain range is is uh, 1, 000, 1 million, I wrote it down somewhere. It's 1 million 800 something thousand acres in this national park. And Joe said you, you might, you might on a good day on top of a mountain or way up high get a signal, but that's it. You ain't. In a, in a old, almost two million acres, you got cell phone service at that little creek. And and those that were desperate to stay connected noticed the cell phone service. Those of us that weren't, we didn't notice nothing. And you're wondering, well, what's this got to do with anything? Is that what we do spiritually? On this journey that we're on, this spiritual life experience that we are in the middle of, how many of us take for granted you can't really stay all that connected? How many of us buy into the fact that you might get connected on a good day at a high point? And so you go to church or you go to a concert or you go to an event or you, I just need to be connected. I need this spiritual encounter. And you pray for that high deal where it's all the energy and it's all the excitement and you, man, ding! How many of you ignore the contact, the connection to the Spirit so much that you don't even realize you got a day? It just went unnoticed. How many of you ex- ex- accept what you've been told? Well, there are people that have a good connection with the Holy Spirit, but our family ain't one of them. We just don't have it. We just don't have that Holy Spirit feeling. We don't have that connection. And you buy it. You go, okay. That's just how it is. I guess it is what it is. Some folks get it. Some folks don't. You'd be amazed at how many people live their whole spiritual existence, their whole time on this spiritual trip we're on without knowing how and where and and if or or could or should be connected. I'm telling you right now, if you are not spiritually desperate to be connected, you are disconnected. And when we are spiritually disconnected, at the moment you're spiritually disconnected, you begin to die spiritually. You must stay connected spiritually. You must desire, you must be desperate to stay connected spiritually, because the moment you're not, you begin to die. Spiritually speaking. John 15. Where we're going to be today, John 15. This is a, I mean, it's really helped me begin to really see how this really, truly is what Jesus is saying. He said, I am the true vine. My Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. He prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and are purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. So my first question when I read that is, okay, so what's the message? Because he said we've already been pruned and purified by the message. What's the message? The message is grace by faith. His grace through our faith is what purifies us. It it is what cuts us away from the the death and destruction that we're headed for, and it is what engrafts us into the life that He gives us. It is simply grace. God's favor. Not yours. God's favor that He poured out is the message. And that is received by us through faith. And so by that message, by the message of grace through faith, We have and are His branches. It says we're already pruned. Now, I want you, some of y'all's Bibles won't read the same. Some of y'all may may say, be cleansed or cleaned away or removed. But that word pruned, that it says, and He prunes the branches, that means He cuts them them back. He cuts them back. And you've already been cut back. Because of the, the message of grace, if you receive it and accept it, you have already been pruned. You're already cleaned by that. I've always read that to where I had to figure out what needed to be cut away, what I need to prune, what needs to be and the Lord. And every time I run into a time where I was really struggling, I could make my, I mean, I could feel like the Lord's just pruning on me, boy. Ooh, I'm just taking a pruning. Pruning ain't never. Listen, I've been pruned. So if I've been pruned, I am able to produce fruit. Are y'all understanding me? 
And since I am in a pruned condition, I'm always able to produce more fruit. Y'all see what I'm saying? How amazing is that that I'm already pruned? And because of the never-ending, eternal, continual message of grace, I am constantly pruned. Because I am only pruned through the message of grace. Are y'all following me? It is by grace that I have been saved, not by works. It is by grace that I am able to bear fruit, period. And it is in grace that I bear more fruit. So this is like truly helping set me free to go, woo, woo. So, so whatever reason I ain't bearing fruit ain't because I can't bear fruit. Because I've already been pruned and, and cleaned to bear fruit. You with me? So listen, if I know what I ain't got the problem in, I quit worrying about where the problem ain't at. So many, Satan is, what is Satan? What is, he is the deceiver. So all he really wants to do is he, he wants to deceive you so that he can get you to spend your lifetime wondering what it is you need to prune away, what it is that you can keep you from producing, what it is. You've been pruned, Jack, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and you accept it by faith, through it, by grace, through faith, you have been pruned. Therefore, you can say, wait a minute, Jack, I am ready to produce fruit because of the grace that's been poured out on me. I quit trying to figure out about, the, you know what I'm saying? That's one whole issue I ain't got to deal with no more, Pappy. That's over. When he throws it up at me, well, you got to cut away. You ain't been pruned enough. You ain't to do it. No, that ain't the problem. So I ain't going to waste my time figuring out why, how I don't have enough Jesus in me. I'm not... No, Jesus is enough. He proved me by His grace through my faith. So I don't need to worry about the grace that is the clean and pruning power. What do I need to focus on? The faith that is my trusting in Him. If I focus on increasing my faith, I will only experience more of His grace. See what I'm saying? But what Satan wants you to do when he gets you focused on what ain't working, all I ain't got enough grace. Therefore, it ain't you that's lacking. It's the favor of God that's lacking in you. Are you with me? Listen, grace is sufficient. Period. Faith, we are to work out our faith. Is that what the Bible says? We're to work it out. We're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Listen, our faith is what we have to develop. Our faith is what we, is, that is us, we. The, 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 there's, a, there's a prayer where a guy, it's not a prayer, he's talking to Jesus, and he says, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. He's saying, I got faith, but golly, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I need help with my faith. That's where we're all at. And I'm telling you right now, the spiritually disconnected are not increasing their faith. They're not working on their faith. The spiritually disconnected are complacent. They have accepted that. I just don't always get connected. I just don't always, I just say, I just can't always reach out. I just can't, I just can't, I just can't. I don't always have a signal. And it's a big old world, and there's only a few spots, you know, there's only a few spots where you might get connected. There's only a few people that really have that. So they buy into that, and therefore they spend their life in a beautiful place with a beautiful opportunity, and they begin to die slowly internally because spiritually they are not staying connected. Listen, people, we must be desperate to be connected spiritually to our Father in Heaven because of Jesus Christ through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We must have, we must be desperate. I just want you to know there was one guy in camp that was desperate to stay connected with the outside world. Old Doug. That Doug heard the day, let me just tell you. It was like, what? Hey, what? I mean, he heard the day. Why was Doug desperate when the rest of us wasn't? Y'all know I've been married forever. Since junior high. Joe's been married long. All us older guys have been married long enough for enough times. It's just, a, just the other day being married. I mean, some of it, boy, we have to keep moving on. You know what I'm saying? It just, it, you know how we get. I mean, think about it. If you was married to Brian, would just Brian Blanton here sitting here. I mean, I, he's a great drummer and all, but can you just be, imagine how thankful Amy is when he has to go out and work a little bit every now and then? 
I mean, you know, I mean, but listen, when they first fell in love, oh, my goodness. Listen, hey, Doug and his sweet bride were planning their wedding the week we left. So put, so just, just think about that. Yeah, they're planning their wedding, and he's going to go away and be gone without no phone. Now, listen, he was a little tense about the wedding in the first place. Now he's not going to have a clue what's going on and what's being decided. And there's so much love. Y'all remember when y'all was in love like that? I really can't. I've tried. I'm just, I mean, I asked Christy, can you remember? And she said, I, if I can get past the way you talked to me last week, I might can remember how I felt about you. <laughs> Listen, they ain't got all that with them. Y'all know what I'm saying? They, they, they planning their wedding. Everything is great. Nobody has bad breath first thing in the morning. It's all wonderful. It makes you want to puke. There are a few people that have a lifelong marriage like that. Can you mean? I have a hard time being his friend. I mean, anyway, we need to move forward. So, uh, listen, when, when Doug heard the ding, he's like, oh, man. Y'all put that picture of the, of the creek back up. Y'all look in the background. Y'all see that? Now, that's your mama. And then that's that's a little red. And then there he is. Y'all see? Y'all see what he got in his hand? Hey, this sucker is connected. Jack, he is, hey, he ain't listen. So, so listen, later that day, we come back into camp, we set up the cook, and we're all just kicking back, hanging around the campfire. I still have no idea cell phone service exists. None. All of a sudden, we look around, and Doug gone. Jack. Joe Mama goes, where's Doug at? I don't know. He just said nothing to you. I said, no. He asked, and he, I mean, he's like an old, ugly, hairy mama, you know, I mean, just nothing nice about him, you know, I mean, I, I mean, just, I'm just saying, he's getting grizzlier by the minute, like, oh, I don't know where he's at, we're, I, oh, it's getting dark, it's going to be dark, man, he's going to need, he's going to need that, everybody, I, I don't, it wasn't just, you know, ride for dark, Joe Mama's saddling his horse, where are you going? I mean, I got to go find him, so what's something's wrong? I can't remember, I think it was Algo said, I heard that phone ding when we were at Snowball Dick. He might be a snowball dick. Well, yeah, he heard it then. He's only been married seven years. So when he heard the thing, he thought, oh, I can talk to my wife. It may not be today, but when I want to, she'll say, I'm saying, I'm going to go back to snow. Because he, he, hey, he got ten. Bing. I'm coming back here because I want to talk to her before I, the rest of us ain't even thought of I'm just telling you all the truth. We ain't even thought about calling our wife. Them younger guys on the took notice. Wait a minute. We might get out right here. And I tell, I'm just telling you, they may not have all had cell phone service, or they may not have all got out, but every stinking one of them stuck away from camp at least once. <laughs> I, I the fact is, what, what Doug and his sweet bride had is something that we all forget. And is we were all desperate for our mate when we said, I'll love you and be with you forever until death do we part. We were desperately in love. We had them, and we had to have more and more and more of We just knock up. Man, I love you, and I can't imagine life without you. What, what he had that most of us don't have is the desperate need and love that keeps that life alive. Period. And that's the same thing we have to have in order to keep our spiritual lives alive. We have to be desperate for love of Jesus and a love for Jesus. And so you've got to find a way. And that's what John is saying when he writes John 15. He's saying, look, guys, you, you've got to be in me. You've got to be, you got a desire to have a connection. You must remain in me. He's saying, stay in my presence. Stay connected. Remain Consistent right here. It says, it, it, says, it says, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. If you lose connection, you cannot bear fruit. If that don't make you desperate, you don't know what you could produce. This is the truth. Many, many Christians don't produce fruit because they don't realize how good the fruit is. 
But you got to want to be connected. You need to be so desperate. Here's what happens when you're desperate to be connected. You become determined to find the connection. And then you become dedicated to the connection. Dedicated to that relationship. Dedicated. I will remain connected. I will remain in love. I will remain desperate, passionate for my Lord Jesus. The reason we have so many passive, not passionate Christians is because they aren't desperately connected. Period. Without desperation, you don't have much passion. But we have cons- we, we think desperate means a, a bad thing. It's like, oh, I don't ever want to be desperate. My prayer has changed. Lord, please help me to remain desperate. I need to be more desperate. Because I need more of you and more of you and more of you. And John's simply telling it that Jesus is teaching in John's writing that, that look, if you don't remain desperate, you're just you're just beginning to dry up and and spiritually produce nothing. Produce nothing. Don't become spiritually dead. In Psalm 63, David wrote, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Do you see how passionate he, how desperate he is? To, to, to he, Every part of him is just desperate for the Lord. In Psalms 84, it says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's army. I long, yes, I thank with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, my body and soul, I shout joyfully to the living God. That's not written by David. But the same thing is written. I am desperate for being in your presence. I am desperate to remain connected. I desperately need a drink. I need to know you, feel you, see you, taste you in this dry and weary land I'm stuck in. And the problem with us in America is we don't have we don't know what desperate is. There's a mini mart, got everything in the world you want to drink right next door. I mean, we're not desperate for anything. Desperation produces determination. That's where we lack as a nation. That's where we lack as a church. That's where we lack as our own individual lives as Christians. We lack the desperation that produces the determination. And I promise you, if you are truly desperate for the Lord, you will become determined. To remain connected with the Lord. And then you'll find the discipline to live in connection with the Lord. He goes on to say, verses 5 through 8, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch. It withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile and burned. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. You may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, listen to this last verse. When you produce much fruit, you are truly my disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So how do I, how do I stay abiding? How do I remain? How do I do this? Well, in 1 John first, chapter 4, verse 15, it says, All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have a... a, a the, Jesus, the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. So in order for you to ever be a part of, grafted, connected to, you've got to believe and declare. Listen, you have got to believe and declare Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? The second thing you have to do, John John 1, 12, but to all who believe Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children. So you believed Him, you declared Him, now what do you got to do? Accept Him. You have to accept Jesus. Now listen, when you accept Him as Jesus, He is a free gift. His gift of grace is given free. But when you accept Him, you surrender over to Him. Now He's not just your Savior. He is your Lord. He is the King of kings to you. Are y'all following me? Then you go to the next one, 1 John 3, 24. Those who obey God's commands remain in fellowship with Him. You had to believe who he was. You had to declare who he was. You had to accept who he is. 
Now you have to obey what he said. At least, one thing for sure. You can't leave here today and not know how to stay connected in the, in the Spirit. You can't. All you got to do is write these four verses down. He says, for those who obey God's commands remain in fellowship with Him and He with them. And we know He lives in us because the Spirit He gave us lives in us. Listen, if you want to know the connection, how do I stay connected? I cannot stay connected without the Spirit of God that indwells me. And as I am obedient to what He has commanded of me, and what he, if I live in obedience, my connection stays solid. My ding be going ding. But nobody remains obedient if they ain't desperate. Y'all ever notice that? You go, 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 go. I tell you what, go Christmas shopping and leave your little kids. You know, y'all leave, I don't know what time y'all leave kids, but six, seven, eight year old kids, you go, you know, I'm going to town. I'll be back. No, no, we go. 10, 11, 15, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, you're going to miss out. you got two types of kids. you got one, as soon as the taillights drive out, they are up and cleaning and getting things in order, right? And then you got the other kind. It's when the headlights show back up. That they up and cleaning and getting things. Listen, that's how you live spiritually. That's how you live spiritually. Some of y'all going to be cramming stuff under the bed when Jesus shows up. You'll be like, oh, Lord, help me. I didn't get it. Hey, Jack. He said, if you obey my commands, remain in fellowship with me. You stay connected by being obedient. Stay going to look at the last one, 1 John 2, 24. It says, so you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. So, so how do you maintain your connection? Through obedience. you got to obey. Hey, do y'all know how much he told us to do and not to do and what we should do and shouldn't do? And how, how are you kidding me? How do I obey all that? How do I obey all that? How do I produce much fruit? You got to know who Jesus is. You got to know what Jesus did. And you got to know why he done it. 